Welcome to Celestial Chronicles. In today's video, we will be diving deep into the stories of the five most powerful men in the Bible. These men were not only significant figures in their time, but their actions and faith have left a lasting impact that continues to inspire us today. We'll be exploring their journeys, their achievements, and the lessons we can learn from their lives. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon so you never miss an update from us. Join our community and be part of the conversation as we explore these fascinating stories together. So, who are these powerful men? What made them stand out in the pages of the Bible? And how can their stories inspire us today? Let's find out! 1. Melchizedek Our journey begins with one of the most intriguing characters in the Bible, Melchizedek. Despite being mentioned only briefly in three books of the Bible, Melchizedek's impact is profound. Who was Melchizedek? Melchizedek first appears in the Bible in Genesis 14. His story begins with Abram, who would later be known as Abraham. Abram had just come back from a brave mission to rescue his nephew, Lot. Lot had been captured during a battle between five Canaanite kings and four kings from the east. After winning the battle and saving Lot, Abram meets Melchizedek. Melchizedek is a unique figure, he is both the king of Salem, an ancient city believed to be Jerusalem, and a priest of the Most High God. This encounter is significant because it shows Melchizedek's dual role as both a king and a priest, which was unusual for that time. Melchizedek brings out bread and wine to Abram and blesses him, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Abram responds by giving Melchizedek a tenth of everything he has, recognizing his spiritual authority. This brief but important meeting highlights Melchizedek's importance and sets the stage for later biblical references to his unique priesthood, which is seen as a precursor to the eternal priesthood of Jesus Christ. Why is Melchizedek significant? Melchizedek's name means King of Righteousness, and Salem means peace, making him the King of Peace. What's unusual about Melchizedek is that he holds both the office of a king and a priest, a combination that is unique in the Bible. In Genesis 14 verses 18 to 20, we read that Melchizedek brought out bread and wine and blessed Abram. Abram acknowledged Melchizedek's priesthood by giving him a tenth of the spoils from battle, a gesture of respect and gratitude. Melchizedek's role is used to explain Jesus' position in the New Testament. The book of Hebrews refers to Jesus as a high priest in the order of Melchizedek, highlighting Jesus' eternal priesthood and kingship. Psalm 110 verse 4 also makes a connection between Melchizedek and the Messiah, emphasizing the everlasting nature of this priestly order. One of the most fascinating aspects of Melchizedek is the mystery surrounding him. There is no record of his genealogy, birth, or death, which gives him an almost transcendent presence in the biblical narrative. This lack of earthly ties makes him a type of Christ, who is eternal and divine. Melchizedek, though a mysterious figure, plays a crucial role in the biblical narrative. He exemplifies the perfect union of kingship and priesthood, a dual role that foreshadows the coming of Christ. As believers, we are called to emulate Abram's example of faith and devotion, recognizing the divine in the representatives God places in our lives. Melchizedek's story teaches us about the importance of recognizing and honoring God's representatives on earth. Abram's act of giving tithes out of gratitude, not to receive a blessing, is a powerful reminder of true faith and devotion. To Moses Next, we turn to Moses, a central figure in the story of the Exodus and the deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt. Who was Moses? Moses' story begins with a miraculous escape. Born during a time when Pharaoh had decreed the death of all male Hebrew infants, Moses was saved by his mother's desperate act of placing him in a basket on the Nile River. Found and adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, he was raised as a prince in the Egyptian court, a Hebrew by birth but an Egyptian by upbringing. Despite his privileged upbringing, Moses' life took a dramatic turn. One day, he saw an Egyptian slave driver beating a Hebrew slave. In a moment of righteous anger, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. When the act became known, Moses fled Egypt, fearing for his life. Moses spent the next 40 years in the wilderness of Midian, living as a shepherd. During this time, he married Zipporah, the daughter of Jethro, and started a family. It was a period of humility and preparation, far removed from the grandeur of Egypt. At the age of 80, Moses' life changed forever. While tending his flock on Mount Horeb, he encountered a burning bush that was not consumed by the flames. God spoke to him from the bush, calling him to a divine mission, to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and into freedom. 
Despite his initial reluctance and feelings of inadequacy, Moses accepted God's call. Moses returned to Egypt and confronted Pharaoh with a powerful message from God, let my people go. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, leading to a series of devastating plagues that struck Egypt. From turning water into blood to the death of the firstborn, each plague demonstrated God's supremacy over the Egyptian gods and Pharaoh's power. The final plague broke Pharaoh's resistance, and he allowed the Israelites to leave. Moses led them out of Egypt, but their journey was far from over. They soon faced the Red Sea, with Pharaoh's army in pursuit. In one of the Bible's most famous miracles, God parted the Red Sea, allowing the Israelites to cross on dry ground and then drowning the Egyptian army that followed. Moses' leadership didn't end with the escape from Egypt. He guided the Israelites through the wilderness, a journey marked by both challenges and triumphs. The people often grumbled and disobeyed, but Moses remained steadfast in his faith. At Mount Sinai, Moses received the Ten Commandments from God, a divine code of ethics that would shape the moral foundation of Israel and influence countless generations. This moment was a testament to Moses' unique relationship with God and his role as a mediator between God and his people. Moses' journey was not without personal trials. He struggled with his own doubts and frustrations, at times questioning his ability to lead. One notable incident was when he struck a rock to bring forth water, disobeying God's command to speak to the rock. This act of disobedience ultimately prevented him from entering the Promised Land. At the end of his life, Moses stood on Mount Nebo, overlooking the Promised Land. Though he was not permitted to enter it, he had fulfilled his mission. He had led the Israelites out of bondage, through trials and tribulations, towards the promise of a new beginning. Moses' life is a testament to God's ability to use ordinary people for extraordinary purposes. His story encourages us to trust in God's plan, even when we feel inadequate or unworthy. Through Moses, we see that faith, obedience, and perseverance can lead to great things. Moses' life is a testament to God's ability to use ordinary people for extraordinary purposes. His story encourages us to trust in God's plan, even when we feel inadequate or unworthy. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with others who might find it meaningful. 3. David From a shepherd boy to a great king, David's journey is one of the most beloved stories in the Bible. Who was David? David began his life as a humble shepherd in Bethlehem, the youngest son of Jesse. His early years were spent tending sheep, where he developed his skills as a musician and a warrior. Known for his musical talent, David played the harp so beautifully that he was brought to the court of King Saul to soothe the troubled king with his music. David gained fame for his bravery when he faced the giant Goliath. Armed with just a sling and a stone, David defeated Goliath with a single shot, showcasing his faith in God and his fearless spirit. This victory not only saved Israel from the Philistines, but also set David on the path to becoming a national hero. David's journey to kingship began when the prophet Samuel anointed him to replace King Saul. Despite Saul's initial favor, jealousy and fear soon took over, leading Saul to view David as a threat. David spent years on the run, but he never lost his faith or his trust in God's plan. Eventually, David became the king of Israel. His reign was marked by significant achievements, including the establishment of Jerusalem as the nation's capital. David brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, uniting the tribes of Israel and centralizing worship. His leadership and military prowess secured Israel's borders and brought prosperity to the nation. However, David's life was not without personal struggles. One of the most notable episodes was his sin with Bathsheba. David's adulterous affair and the subsequent orchestration of her husband Uriah's death brought severe consequences. This period of David's life was marked by turmoil and suffering. Despite his grave mistakes, David's sincere repentance and his heart for God earned him the title of a man after God's own heart. Psalm 51, written by David, is a poignant expression of his remorse and his desire for God's forgiveness. This aspect of David's character highlights the power of repentance and God's boundless grace. David's legacy is vast. He authored many of the Psalms, which continue to be a source of comfort and inspiration for millions around the world. These poetic expressions of worship, lament, and thanksgiving reveal David's deep and abiding relationship with God. Most importantly, David is an ancestor of Jesus, establishing a royal lineage that would lead to the Messiah. This connection underscores the significance of David's role in God's plan for salvation. His lineage fulfilled the prophesies that the Messiah would come from the house of David. David's story teaches us about the importance of repentance and God's grace. Despite his flaws and failures, David's deep relationship with God is a model for us to follow. 
His life encourages us to seek God wholeheartedly, to repent sincerely, and to trust in God's unfailing love and forgiveness. For Samson. Samson's life is a story of great strength and tragic flaws. Who was Samson? Samson was born during a time when Israel was oppressed by the Philistines. His story begins with a divine announcement, an angel appeared to his parents, instructing them to raise their son as a Nazarite. From birth, Samson was dedicated to God, bound by vows that included abstaining from wine, avoiding contact with the dead, and never cutting his hair. Samson's extraordinary strength was a gift from God, enabling him to perform incredible feats. As a young man, he tore a lion apart with his bare hands, an early sign of his divine empowerment. His strength became legendary, a symbol of God's power at work through him. Samson's most famous exploits include defeating a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. This act of sheer power and courage demonstrated not only his physical might, but also the divine intervention that enabled him to protect and lead Israel. However, Samson's life was marred by poor choices, particularly in his relationships. His downfall came when he fell in love with Delilah, a woman whose loyalties lay with the Philistines. Delilah, driven by greed and manipulation, repeatedly tried to uncover the secret of Samson's strength. Samson eventually revealed his secret, his uncut hair was the source of his strength, a symbol of his Nazarite vow. While he slept, Delilah had his hair cut, stripping him of his divine power. The Philistines captured him, blinded him, and imprisoned him. It seemed like the end of Samson's story, a tragic fall from grace. But Samson's story did not end in defeat. In his final moments, Samson turned back to God. Blind and humiliated, he prayed for strength one last time. God heard his prayer, and Samson's strength returned. In a final act of redemption, he pushed against the pillars of the Philistine temple, bringing the structure down and killing himself along with many of Israel's enemies. Samson's death was a dramatic and powerful end to a life marked by both divine potential and human failure. His final act demonstrated that God's purposes can be fulfilled even through flawed individuals. It was a testament to God's mercy and the possibility of redemption, no matter how far one has strayed. Samson's story highlights the consequences of straying from God's path, but also the possibility of redemption. It reminds us that no matter how flawed we are, God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Samson's life encourages us to seek God's guidance, to remain faithful to our commitments, and to trust in God's ability to work through us, despite our imperfections. 5. Abraham Finally, we come to Abraham, the father of faith and a central figure in the Bible. Abraham, originally named Abram, was a prominent and affluent figure hailing from Ur of the Chaldeans, a city renowned for its advanced culture, architectural marvels, and bustling economy. Ur, located in present-day southern Iraq, was a major center of Sumerian civilization, teeming with commerce, sophisticated art, and monumental structures like the Ziggurat of Ur. Abram lived a life of comfort and prestige within this thriving metropolis, enjoying the benefits of his wealth and the respect of his community. Despite his prosperous existence, Abram's life took a profound and unexpected turn when he received a divine call from God. This call was not just a simple message, but a profound directive that would alter the course of his life and the history of his descendants. God instructed Abram to leave behind his homeland, his kindred, and his father's house, and to journey to an unknown land that he would reveal to him. This divine command required immense faith and trust, as it meant abandoning the security and familiarity of your for an uncertain future. Abram's response to this call was one of unwavering obedience and faith. Accompanied by his wife Sarai, later Sarah, his nephew Lot, and their entire household, Abram embarked on a journey toward the land of Canaan. This pilgrimage was fraught with challenges, but it was also marked by divine promises. God assured Abram that he would become the father of a great nation, his descendants would be as numerous as the stars, and through him, all the families of the earth would be blessed. Throughout his journey, Abram's faith was tested repeatedly. He encountered famines, conflicts, and personal trials, yet he remained steadfast in his trust in God's promises. His name was eventually changed to Abraham, signifying his new role as the father of many nations. This name change was not merely symbolic, but marked a covenant with God, where Abraham's faith and obedience were acknowledged and rewarded with the promise of a lasting legacy. God called Abram to leave his homeland and go to a land he would show him. This call came with a promise, God would make him the father of a great nation. Without knowing his destination, Abram demonstrated extraordinary faith and obedience by setting out on this journey. Faith and obedience defined Abram's life. He left behind the familiar and stepped into the unknown, trusting in God's promise. 
His journey was not without challenges, but Abram's unwavering faith was evident at every step. One of the most significant tests of his faith came later in his life. In a profound act of obedience, Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac, the child of promise. At the last moment, God intervened, providing a ram as a substitute. This event not only tested Abraham's faith, but also reaffirmed God's promises to him. It underscored the deep trust Abraham had in God's plan, even when it seemed incomprehensible. Central to Abraham's story is the covenant God made with him. God promised that Abraham's descendants would be as numerous as the stars, and that through his offspring, all nations would be blessed. This covenant was foundational for the people of Israel and pointed forward to the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Abraham lived to be 175 years old, leaving a legacy of faith and obedience. His life was a testament to God's faithfulness and the importance of trusting in his promises. The stories of his encounters with God, his travels, and his trials are cornerstones of the Bible, illustrating the depth of his relationship with God. Abraham's life encourages us to have unwavering faith in God's plan, even when the path is unclear. His example shows that true greatness comes from trusting and obeying God. In moments of doubt or uncertainty, we can look to Abraham's story for inspiration, seeing how God's promises were fulfilled through his faith. These five powerful men, Melchizedek, Moses, David, Samson, and Abraham, each had unique journeys marked by faith, challenges, and divine purpose. Their stories offer us valuable lessons about trust, obedience, repentance, and the transformative power of God's grace. As we reflect on their lives, let's consider how we can apply these principles to our own lives. What can we learn from their faith and their flaws? How can their stories inspire us to live with greater purpose and devotion? Thank you for joining us on this journey through the Bible's most powerful men. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Celestial Chronicles for more inspiring content. Let's continue the conversation in the comments below. Who is your favorite biblical figure and why? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Until next time, may you be blessed with the wisdom and courage to live a life of faith and purpose.